Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. This is the MXL01, and we have liftoff in three, two, one. Nineteen seventy one saw the success of two MXL launches, each sending a satellite to lunar orbit. Now, a mission to explore the surface is underway. The mission is dubbed Poseidon. Building off of the failures of previous missions which attempted this feat, namely a single moonstone lander out of eight launched, which tumbled upside down, and a small roving vehicle which was nearly entirely destroyed upon touchdown. Poseidon aims to pick up the pieces, almost literally. On board is scientific equipment designed to give N9SA a broader understanding of the lunar surface, ahead of a crewed expedition deep in the planning phases at this point in time. One function of this equipment is a small robotic scoop which is intended to collect a small amount of dust, moon rock, or whatever else it can reach stow it inside a small white capsule atop the lander, and send these samples back to Earth to be collected for analysis. Not only will Poseidon land on the moon, it will be able to come back home, arguably a rather important feature for crewed expedition, but I suppose it depends who you ask. Proving capable of returning from the moon will no doubt bolster respect for the space program not only from the public eye, but also from government and private agencies funding the whole endeavor. It also serves as a rather monumental milestone towards said crewed expedition, but such a feat is still a little ways off, and the possibility of failure is still on everyone's minds. As an attempt to minimize gravity losses, the lander was placed into an orbit of the moon believed to be as low as practically possible, with an apolune of 40 kilometers and a paralune of just 10 kilometers. Though it is important to note, these altitudes are not based on radar, and as such, high-reaching crater walls are likely to extend as high as 10 kilometers or even more in some places. In addition, every satellite in lunar orbit has indicated the gravitational pull of the Earth causes many orbits of the moon to be a bit unstable. This worried flight control greatly as the mission proceeded on schedule. Poseidon skimming the surface of the moon at a speed of just under 2 kilometers per second. Nearly one week has passed since Poseidon lifted off from the surface of the Earth, and it is now on final approach for landing. It's becoming increasingly evident an upcoming crater wall has a significant chance to strike the lander, and the spacecraft is instructed to immediately orient itself facing backwards, as to create a smaller vertical profile. Mere seconds afterwards, trajectory analysis indicates a 100% chance of impact. With hardly any time to react, Poseidon is instructed to reorient upwards, fire ullage, and light its main engines for only a moment. Telemetry is signaled back to the space center, indicating a strike did not occur, but flight has no time to celebrate just yet. Still on a suborbital trajectory, the transfer stage is ready to burn the rest of its fuel and let go of the lander. Poseidon now has less than one kilometer per second to slow down before reaching the surface. From this point on to final approach, it will be a balance of maintaining a shallow vertical velocity while bleeding off horizontal velocity as quickly as possible, ideally in such a way that both reach zero at the same time and the same place, at the surface. Its thrust-to-weight ratio increases as its fuel mass decreases, 
requiring the angle of attack to gradually change over time. That coupled with the lumpy surface of the moon makes this less of an exact science in practice. Eventually, both horizontal and vertical speed come to zero just above the surface, and Poseidon is able to pulse its engine to bring itself to a soft landing. This will be the first of hopefully many lunar landings that legitimately reach the surface as intended. No flipping over, no unplanned explosive disassembly. The Kerbinauts back home definitely appreciate the successful touchdown of this mission, as they are beginning training for a lunar expedition themselves, and their various incremental space flights that are scheduled to take place beforehand as well. But as mentioned previously, this mission has only just reached its halfway mark. Two scoops of lunar dust, rock, and whatever else have been collected by the probe and readied for liftoff in its small re-entry capsule. Much to the excitement of N9SA, Poseidon will now perform the first liftoff from another celestial body other than Earth. Though initially designed to leave the landing stage on the surface, it is later decided to utilize its remaining fuel for ascent as well, as the return stage's capability may vary depending on how many moon rocks it has collected. Unfortunately, the system lacked any real way to measure its haul. As such, Flight wanted to leave nothing to chance, and the added boost from the landing stage was just the thing to ensure mission success. Reaching a stable, zero-impact probability orbit around the moon, Flight plots a trajectory for Poseidon to come back home, after which the mission will have successfully performed many firsts for the space program, and demonstrated the feasibility for crew to reach down and land on its surface in the future. Essentially, providing the program a big old green light, we are go for the lunar landing project. On board, small pieces of another world eagerly wait analysis. Everything was going really well. Poseidon rapidly approaches the Earth's atmosphere, awaiting commands to jettison the capsule holding its precious cargo. Taking steps to ensure its ballistic trajectory will be sound, Flight ensures attitude is go right up to reaching the atmosphere of the Earth. Seconds before receiving the mission's final command, however, connection is lost. The probe has yet to hit the atmosphere, though it is about to, so either lack of line of sight or a communications network failure is to blame. But no matter the cause, N9SA will never find any evidence of Poseidon reaching the surface of the Earth. 